And I'm super excited for the show today uh, for a variety of reasons, which I will tell you about in just a minute. But I want to go over what the streamlined connection actually is, what our goal is here. Um, and it's that most people don't realize that organization is the key to freedom, wealth, and prosperity. And they don't realize that they feel stressed because they're um, overwhelmed all of the time because of that disorganization. And being organized, it's not just tidy. It is about actually having access to the things you need when you need them. And it's the connection between the control you crave and the freedom you desire and how to make that happen in the easiest way possible. It's a powerful tool. Organization can actually help you get control of that external space so it can be a true reflection of what's going on in your internal um, space. And it starts with mindset. And we connect the mindset to the behavior and the emotion, and that's what can actually help you live a more satisfying and meaningful life. It's what can help you scale your business so you can build wealth, and you can take more vacations and have more fun, which is the whole purpose, right? Why would we just go to work all the time? Um, but we get we want to create nurturing and supportive environments for you to do that um, that thriving that you've been seeking. Simplicity is the way we focus that attention on what we're doing so that it makes it all easier and it comes together. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Mary Martizzi Pino. I'm a certified professional organizer and many breakthrough business coach. I love studying how habits help people uh, affect their productivity and organization uh, for me goes both ways. I'm a little OCD sometimes and sometimes I'm a little bit of a mess, but I know I'm organized so I can regroup and reset pretty quickly. I've been doing this about 20 years um, and Lisa's been doing it for quite a while as well. And I'm so excited to talk to her because we've not actually met in person before. We've kind of intersected in a few different ways we were just discovering. Um, but Lisa Woodruff is a productivity and home, home organization expert, motivating and teaching busy women to take back control of their lives with functional systems, systems, everybody, systems. That's the connection. You need systems. <laughs> um, she's the founder and CEO of Organize 365. She has a fabulous podcast of the same name, and she has created a system called the Sunday Basket System, which is surprisingly or not so surprisingly when you know how brains actually work, um, very similar to my streamlined paper solution. So it's um, gonna be really interesting to, to talk to her about how they, they interact. Um, her podcast is award-winning and I am so excited to have you on the show today, Lisa, welcome. Miriam, thank you so much for having me. You are welcome. Um, so tell me a little bit about your journey into organizing because yours is quite different than mine. <laughs> so I love, I love that you're really tying in that, you know, organization gives you freedom, gives you a sense of control and really is a wealth builder. Like if mm -hmm. you look around at anyone who has risen up the corporate ladder or is the head of your PTA or whatever organization you're in, that person usually has figured out good habits and organization. Mm -hmm. And as a kid, I was an organized kid. Like when my mom would send me to my bedroom as punishment, I was like, yes, I get to clean and organize my right. bedroom. Like, and every time I was done with punishment, I never came out of my room because I was busy moving furniture. And like the room was like 10 by 10, but right. uh, I just loved that. And then I went to college, I got a teaching degree. And after school, I would go into the other teachers' classrooms and I would just talk to them. And then I would start organizing their classrooms. Like I love jigsaw puzzles. I just love organizing. Mm. And then I quit teaching and we adopted our two kids and I became very unorganized in my 30s. Mm. Like I, my bills were being paid late, not because we didn't have the money, but because I couldn't find the bills. There was adoption paperwork, medical paperwork, direct sales paperwork. This was the early 2000s. And I just got drowned in the amount of different things I was trying to do in my life. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I got myself organized, got back to work and I was about to turn 40 and then I found myself exactly like you said, I was overwhelmed, overweight, depressed, in the worst debt we'd ever been in our life. So I quit my job, because that's what you do when you're when you're in debt is you quit your job. 
<laughs> but I like, I didn't recognize my house anymore. I was not the mother I wanted to be. I was not the wife I wanted to be. Uh, you know, my kids were starting to suffer from it. And I just got to the point where I was like, well, if everything is going to come crashing down and my administrator has now said, I'm not a good teacher, which I knew not to be true because I was 39 in the past. Mm -hmm. I would have thought it was me, but I, I knew it was not me. And I just realized that, you know, it wasn't me, but I had to go home and reclaim my home. And I had to figure out how to be an organized person again. And that's when nice. I started Organize 365. Perfect. Um, I can't wait to, to come back with a couple points on that, but we do have to take a quick break. Um, I'm super excited about something you just said. So after the break, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, planning for changes and how you can catch up when you have failed to plan for an unexpected change. I'm Mary Martizzi Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network, and we will be back after this break. The free one minute mail solution works for email too, and you can download it at the link below or over there. Maybe it's a, the link. I am speaking with Lisa Woodruff of Organize 365, and um, we were, she was telling how she kind of fell apart on her organization when she adopted kids and, and her entire life changed, which I know adoption, on the one hand, you plan for it. On the other hand, it happens when it happens. And so that was probably a big part of it. But <laughs> from your perspective, what, what went awry? Yes. So 2000 to 2002, when the kids were actually adopted, what went awry was I had to learn how to have more than just my husband and myself in our household. Um, and I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, so I always have multiple businesses going at one time. And I'm, I'm an educator by trade in early childhood. So the baby part wasn't a problem. It was all the paperwork and the medical needs. And I got that organized really in about six months and got back to a steady Eddie. It was when the kids were moving into middle school and I thought I was ready to go back into the workforce that I only made it about 18 months before everything just totally imploded again. Oh uh, yeah. So it, and again, it's, you got to have that mindset, a little bit of pre-planning and then a system to get yeah. you through it and a system that can adapt as you learn more about your new situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how about you tell us a little bit about how you decided to turn it into a business? Yeah. So I didn't really decide. <laughs> it just kind of happened. Yeah. So I was turning 40. I am from a really long line of educated and entrepreneurial people. So I'm a fourth generation female college graduate. Like my mother, oh, my nice. grandmother, great grandmother all have college degrees and they all owned their own businesses when I look back on it. Mm -hmm. And my dad and his dad and his dad, they all owned their own businesses as well. So basically, I was unemployable from the time I was born. Wow. I did, it took me a while to figure that part out. <laughs> yeah. And I love teaching and I love kids. So I wanted a job I could do and be a mom eventually one day, which is why I picked teaching. But when I was turning 40, you know, that 40 year old, that 40 years, sometimes it's 38, sometimes it's 42, but definitely at 40, like especially for women, it's very pivotal. And you just mm -hmm. kind of realize that, hey, I'm going to be alive at least another 40 years. Is this what I want to be doing? Like, what is my impact in the world? What do I want to put my whole heart into? So I knew it was time to start a business. I had had a blog before. I looked at everything that I had done that I was successful in. And I either was successful because I was an organized person or I helped somebody else get organized. That was the thread, even in all of my teaching jobs. It was mm -hmm. my ability to organize that really... Um, did it. So I named my company Organize 365 because I knew that would be good for SEO. I had no idea what I was going to do. I started blogging. I started taking back my home. And within a couple months, um, I was in a direct sales company and the parties were gigantic. I was like, why are there so many people here? Like, I've been doing this for years, like too many. There were 25 people at the party and I didn't know any of them. I was like, what are they doing here? And my friend said, well, everyone wants to know what a professional organizer has to say. And I was like, I'm, I'm a professional organizer. She goes, yeah. I'd been organizing in people's houses. I didn't know that's what it was called. Oh, yeah. Didn't even know. And that's why I was like, oh, okay. And then over the next three years, I was in people's homes in Cincinnati, and I helped them get organized, children's, adults, it didn't matter, men, women. And um, along the way, my clients started saying, you don't need to come back. And I thought they ran out of money. But they said, no, we figured out the questions you were asking us, and we did it ourselves, and we finished it over the weekend. Multiple people right in a row. And I was like, wait, 
organization is a learnable skill. I thought you were either born organized or you weren't. And I was born oh. organized, so I could bless you with my talents and gifts. <laughs> and you were not born organized because you were self-professed, not born organized. But when I realized it was learnable and I understand the internet, I then turned all of my attention to how do I break this down as a teacher and right. teach it through the internet? Oh, I love that so much on so many levels. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, people are still surprised. It's been a profession for 30 years. I think the National Association was actually founded in 1978-ish. Um, but it has been a, a technical profession for 30 plus years. Yeah. And people still don't know that it is a profession. And many organizers still do the work without knowing they could be both making way more money at it and they can develop a system that they can transfer the skill. And it's not about just helping your clients rearrange and reorganize the same stuff over and over and over. It's yes. empowerment, really. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my eyes were just totally opened at that point. Fantastic. Oh, I'm so glad that that all came together for you before you gave up. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. <laughs> all right. So your... Um, what made the biggest difference in your business in terms of taking it to the next level? Was it figuring out the Sunday system or your life stages system? So what's so interesting is when you're going to start a business, like if you're a business owner, I now can look back at 10 years and see my business in these three year chunks. Um, mm. I, I don't have the like degree to say this, but what I've noticed is you make a mental mindset shift for about 18 months. And then you work through that for about 18 months and you start to see the manifest reality of that. And then you start working on the next thing. So oh, if you look back I love in chunks, that. Yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. But mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I know from my perspective, that's been frustrating. Like you get the mindset piece and you understand something intellectually and you're like, why isn't it working? Why isn't it working? And yes. you're like working through it and iterating and figuring it out. And then all of a sudden it works and you're like, oh, that was easy. But during the, the second 18 months, it feels so hard, that messy yeah. middle part. Yes. And if you know that life is just a bunch of these three-year chunks, then you're like, mm -hmm. okay, so the first three years of Organize 365 was figuring out how to price appropriately and get to a job and be able, able to start and finish a job without leaving a mess and mm -hmm. get that client to sign up for the next one. So just in-home organizing was the first three years of Organize 365 with a little bit of blogging. I was right. doing blogging. And then the second three years was having a team doing all of that mm -hmm. in-home organizing and starting to figure out how to transfer what we were doing in person online. And I did that by starting the podcast. So I started the podcast seven years ago. Yeah. I created an online course. And then uh, three years later, we stopped doing any in-home organizing and went all in on the online course and started manufacturing and producing physical products and a warehouse and hiring full-time employees in the corporation. Ooh, yeah, that's big. That's a big yeah. leap. I mean, I remember when you introduced the Sunday basket system and it was like, this is amazing. And then you're like, I don't like the basket. I need a new basket. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, totally. Um, so that whole journey is one I haven't taken, um, but I'm excited because <laughs> when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the Sunday basket system and how it's similar to the streamlined um, paper solution. I can't speak today. I don't know why. It's Friday. <laughs> um, but when we come back uh, from this break, I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network, and we'll be right back. The Streamlined Clutter Solution online course will help you gain control of your stuff and space. What are you waiting for? The link's around here somewhere. And I am speaking with Lisa Woodruff of Organize 365 about her Sunday basket system and how it is similar to the streamlined paper solution. Um, so it's, it's a good way to talk about how different organizers have different approaches, um, but it's all the same end result. Like different people think differently. And so the same solution won't work for everybody. And you need to figure out what is going to resonate for you. Um, and that's why I recommend several different things. But I think from my research, Sunday Basket is most similar. So there's categories involved. And the paper solution has um, to file, to read, to um, act on, to enter, and recycle, and trash, and shred that whole pile of go away. 
<laughs> um, and then you process at a certain time uh, of your week or month that you pick to deal with that stuff. So Lisa, tell us a little bit about how the, the Sunday basket, the overall kind of process of it works. Yes. So the Sunday basket is maybe a little bit more kindergarten version than yours, a favorite organization, <laughs> because I was an early childhood teacher, but also I was a middle school math teacher and they're kind uh -huh. of the same thing. Right. So what I have learned as an educator, and I've taught in private school, public school, disadvantaged children, Montessori education, um, we all learn differently. And so when mm -hmm. I taught middle school math, I was teaching in a Montessori setting. I had mm. 14 students and I had 14 lesson plans. So I taught algebra at 14 different paces in 14 different ways because I believe that only a teacher can fail to teach, a student cannot fail to learn. So right. inside of the Sunday basket, I've incorporated a lot of different learning styles and this is why it's so effective and works for almost everybody that tries it because whatever your learning style is, is inside of the Sunday basket. Mm -hmm. So the Sunday basket has uh, 25 slash pockets in it. There are five that are rainbow colored and then there are five pink, five purple, five blue, and five green. And it organizes all of your active paper. So in your solution, you have a mix of archive and active paper. Yeah. We put the stuff that you would want to reference or go look like, I need to go find that paper in a binder. So it's not in the box at all. Right. So in the box is just your active papers, but also it's your to-do list. It's anything that's in your brain is written down on an index card. We fill our, mm -hmm. our boxes full of that your mail, anything that needs to be done. Like if you need to fix a battery, you just put the item right in the Sunday basket. If you got a quart of paint, you just put it in the Sunday basket till you're ready to do that project. If you need to refill a prescription, you just take the prescription bottle and you throw it in the Sunday basket. Mm -hmm. So it really is a nice pile on the end of your kitchen counter instead of having it all over the place. Right. And then you go through it every single week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I love that because it incorporates the to-dos with the paper. And yeah. and the second part of my solution does deal with the that aspect. But having a place, whenever I mention, I have my out-the-door place, like all the stuff I got to take back. I have my the pile of stuff to remind me to refill the prescription and paint the, the chair and all that stuff is, yes. I actually put a pile of the things <laughs> once I've decided to do it. I, you know, you got to limit how many things you work on at one time. But there is a, a method to our madness, if you will. Well, and I think that is really important to say, uh, Organize 365 has undergone some academic research in the last couple of years. We're defining what is housework, we're defining what is organization, and we're defining what is paper organization. But in mm -hmm. all of those studies, we asked our respondents, when is something organized? Like, what is organization to you? And we mm -hmm. separate out from men and women and men and women had different responses in a lot of categories. Yeah. But when we asked what organization was, the top for both was being able to find something that everything has a place and being able to find it. And mm -hmm. that works great for things that you are putting away. But what do you do with all of this stuff that is in process? It doesn't right. have a place to go. It is in between, like I've decided I'm going to do it and it's going to be done at some time in the future. And some things like, changing your cable company or remodeling your bathroom can take 10 years. Right. So in that 10 years, where do you keep the quote and the paint color that you love and the picture that you cut out of a magazine? And all yes. of that is contained in the Sunday basket, whether it's a one week project or a 10 year project, there is a place for it in here. And that's what we don't have places for in our homes. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I'm so excited you're doing the research because I've been feeling like the research needs to be done and has needed to be done for years. Mm -hmm. um, and people have studied all around it, but not yes. the actual basis. I, I met with a lead researcher in ADHD yesterday, and I told him what I'm doing and that my heart is for, you know, when you are diagnosed with ADHD and you're in school or you're in corporate America, there are structures in your work and in your school to support your neurodivergence. But once you get home, there's nothing. Right. And I said, and what Organize 365 has done is the Sunday basket externalizes executive function. And because yes. it externalizes executive function, you all of a sudden, after six weeks, get your brain capacity back and you end up saving five hours every single week because oh, you're using more. this external brain. I bet it's more because I find some of my clients, mm -hmm. we're saving two hours a day. Well, once you do your home, once your home is organized, that'll save you another seven hours per week. Oh, okay. 
So that's no. that 55 minutes of looking for things. And right. then it just, like what we said back at the top of the hour, was that if you look at the top of your company, your volunteer organization, your church, or whatever you're looking at, the people who have risen to the top have figured out and have organizational and good habits in place. And, and it compounds. It is a compounding return on investment of time. That is what organization is. Yeah, it's a lifetime skill, and it is something that will serve you in every aspect of your life and your work. Um, I also think that there is, you know, the people that are successful and get to the top and stuff, make it seem like it's a, just a natural process. But even those of us that were born lining things up and, and getting excited that we're sent to our room, um, we may have some similarities there, um, <laughs> that when we look back on it, we can actually see places where we learned how to do those things. It is yeah. a learned skill, even for those of us that seem more naturally organized than than you do at this point in time. It is a learned skill. I helped my mom, who was not organized, but desired to be and studied and would buy the books and the magazines. I would be the person that put the systems yep. in place for our family to see if it would work for us. And then I would fix it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. 86% of Americans agree organization is a learnable skill. In every study we've done, 86%. Fantastic. We're going to pick this up when we come back. I'm Miriam ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And Lisa Woodruff of Organize 365 and I are talking about what it means to be organized and systematize your, your, your home life so you can save all that time. We'll be right back. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. And we are all about geeking out on organizing <laughs> research right now. Totally. We were a little off our original topic today, but it's all connected mm -hmm. because you know, Lisa's whole thing is about freeing your mind and controlling your clutter so that, that you can improve your productivity. And we, she was just sharing a really fascinating thing that, that so much of the research in the past, which is 30 years old or more, and just a few things, are about women being the ones that organize. So it's tying back right. to Regina Lark and her emotional labor discussion we had on the show a few weeks back. So check out that episode as well, because I think there's a big intersection there as well. Like, why have you been able to determine why academia focused on women being responsible for the organizing? So I think, you know, another, because I'm a teacher, when you are mm -hmm. a teacher, you teach a concept. And when your students either do not successfully implement that to the level at which you want them to understand it, or you want to understand why you even need to teach this to begin with, I keep unpacking, like, where is this breaking down? And mm -hmm. what I have determined is that organization is a three-part system. First, you declutter, then you organize, then you increase productivity. And right. almost everything out there is about decluttering or increasing productivity. And there's very little no. about actual organizing. And that's where the learning happens. So whenever I start talking about paper, people are like, okay, what digital system? I'm like, no, I don't do digital. And then they're like, I can't understand. Organization <laughs> is always, always, always mm -hmm. analog. It's yes. always analog. So you declutter your closet then you physically have to move around your clothes into whatever order you want them to, and then, and add things as much as you declutter. You realize, oh, I don't have enough underwear. I don't have any white t-shirts. I don't have a new pair of shoes. So you actually buy things in the organizing, not containers, but to fill out your set. And then you increase productivity, which means you get the flock hangers or you label it, or you make it pretty or whatever you do. I am in the organizing space. You declutter with somebody else, you make it pretty or make it however you want it organized on that end. I will teach you how to get organized for the phase of life that you're in so that it will stay organized until the next unexpected event or major life change happens. I love that so much because it is sometimes, you know, let's just stick with the closet example. I go into a closet and, you know, it's a mix of 12 different kinds of hangers. Now, I happen to be a fan of wood hangers, not the flocked ones, but if you have flocked ones, that's fine. But when it's a mix of hangers and they're tangled and every time you take clothes down, you pull it off the hanger and leave the hanger wonky instead of taking the whole hanger out and putting the empty yeah. at the end of the rod, 
you are wasting minutes every time you do laundry, every time you get dressed. And people are like, well, that can't matter. And it's like, and yet it does. <laughs> and back so to what much. I said earlier, organization is always a current investment of time for a future return on exponentially more time. Yes. And it's incremental improvements yes. for exponential results. Yes. And it is tweaking so that it works for you and how your brain thinks because we do process differently. Um, I know you mentioned learning styles a minute ago. Um, yeah. Are Have you been up on the latest research as the neuroscience catches up that it's not actually learning styles, no. it's processing oh. uh, information. So I'll, I'll put you under a couple resources yeah. about that because it was a big thing in, in the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals that we had to change the way we were teaching because learning styles were the common words for things that are a little more complicated on the back end and it wasn't capturing everything. So what we do know is experiential learning works across the board for all the different processing systems. Mm. And there has mm. to be a piece of experiential for it to stick. So when people say, I'm a visual learner, it's like, well, does that mean you like to watch videos? Do you like to watch mm -hmm. someone do it? Or do you like to read about it? Because all those are visual. So what mm -hmm. does it mean? And audio is the same way. But when you can combine and layer the different learning styles, what they used to talk about as, um, and work with an operating system, it, it oh. makes the difference. Are they saying that in education too? Because I have an education background, so we come from learning styles. Yeah, um, I I'll believe so. I got mm -hmm. kind of frustrated with the whole argument because they were talking a little bit in circles. It's like, well, what is our goal? Are we trying to yeah. get more people organized and or are we right. trying to be semantically exact? Yeah, because I'm not good at not... semantics. I'm dyslexic, so I'm going to mess it up anyway. <laughs> right. Um, so I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure there's now, it's been connected now. Um, but in terms of the, the operating systems, I mean, the way, and and off the top of my head, I always get the parts of the brain mixed up, but, you know, some people are able to process in liminal space. Some people process mostly with patterns. Some people process mostly with linear. There's, you know, our brains look at our worlds differently. And so it's how- have to do research now. <laughs> yeah. Um, if anyone that's interested, if you start with Daniel Kahneman thinking fast and slow, oh yeah, um, mm -hmm. it's it's kind of that stuff. Like, how are our brains actually telling us what information is important to us? Mm -hmm. um, and then how there's studies about how it's actually running through our brain and what chemicals are being released for different kinds of people. So it's tied to executive function and stuff too. So I know wow. you have ADHD as well. No, no, you don't. Not diagnosed anyway. Your kids. Do your kids? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I know there's a connection. Yeah. Um, I do write about it a lot. Yeah. I uh, I was sitting in a conference once and listening to someone talk about ADHD and I suddenly went, oh my God. Yeah. I have ADHD. I probably do. I mean, so I've had doctors tell me that you definitely do, but what they've decided is that my systems externalize executive function so much right. that it's the effect a... of ADHD, yes. And as we find with our clients, they mm -hmm. go through the organized 365 processes that they become less depressed, less anxious, and they get mm -hmm. their executive capacity back. So you were talking about the podcast episode that you did that talked about the overwhelm on women. Yes. And I specifically am not talking about the mother load. I specifically am talking about the cognitive load, which is everyone, right. yes. not just women. And I think as we need to be more inclusive with our conversation in this whole discussion, mm -hmm. because everyone's overwhelmed, not just women. Right. Um, I was just trying to make the connection of the past yes. research and stuff. Oh, yeah. So uh, I'm fascinated to see what happens with that. All right. We're going to have to take another break. Um, I'm Miriam Martizzi Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And from Organize 365, I've got Lisa Woodruff here, and we are talking about outsourcing our executive function into a system that keeps track of all the stuff we got to do and and how to deal with that kind of stuff and geeking out on organizing research. Um, we will pick this up when we come back. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. 
Hello and welcome back. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino um, on the Streamline Connection. We're on the Bull Brave TV network and I am speaking with Lisa Woodruff of Organize 365 and we're giggling about who's an expert. Um, and I would say that both of us are experts because we have a wide breadth of experience we brought into organizing and we are both geeking out on studying why that is. Um, but that is not to say other people can't be experts too on various aspects. I just think we're two of the best. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> I agree with you. I have a full agreement. <laughs> All right. So um, what got us there was talking about how clients come to us stressed all the time and they don't really see that organization or their disorganization is a cause of that stress. Um, and they think they have to be unstressed to get organized or they have to take care of this other thing before they can get organized instead of the organization is gonna solve that stuff. So that middle step, that process of organizing. Talk to me about that, Lisa. What what do you see? Yes, so I agree with you and I say the same thing. And it is because when we say organization will help you feel a sense of control in the change that you're going through. Mm -hmm. I feel what our audience is seeing is when I get my house Pinterest perfect, then I will feel in control and they don't have the time or money to do that. So they do nothing. And so right. now that I've defined that it's decluttering, organizing, increasing productivity, and the Pinterest part is over in increasing productivity, they then allow themselves to learn the skill of organizing, knowing that it doesn't involve the labels, the containers, the decorating, the whatever, just right. to actually get it functionally organized. And what they taught me once I got them focused on functional organizing is that what I give through the podcast is grace. And I didn't know that's what I was giving. But mm -hmm. because I was saying, no, 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 we're just going to do this 15 minutes a day. Don't empty out your whole closet only do your shoes. Don't empty out your whole kitchen, only do the silverware drawer. And they were able to be successful. And I was able to say, good job, it's done. Even though it wasn't labeled and it wasn't perfect and they couldn't put a picture on Pinterest. We in Organize 365 don't have before and after pictures because often in this space, you don't see a difference between the before and after. The before and after happens inside. inside and in the function of the home, but it's mm -hmm. it doesn't look like Pinterest. So we now have um, our before is whatever your house looked like before, and the after is how you spend the five hours that you save every single week with the Sunday basket, which is playing with your kids or doing what... It, we don't want to save five hours so we can have a museum house. We want to save five hours so we can do what we're uniquely created to do. I love that so much on so many levels because people are always like, why don't you have before and afters? And I'm like, it doesn't look better. Like it's no. not staged. I mean, it it's does. not an editorial. Not, yes. It yeah. is about the lifestyle change that right. happens, that freedom. Um, so the mm -hmm. other thing I found when I coach people who are struggling with who do I want to be and how do I want to be in my life is going through the stuff. And it goes back to what you were saying earlier with the, how you got into this in the first place, going through your stuff allows you to see the pieces that are connected and you want to carry through. And it allows you to declutter as well because you are now making, you do the easy decluttering, but now in the organizing piece, you're making connections of how you're going to use those things right. and what it says about you and the person you want to be. And so there's that whole discovery of going through the stuff and figuring out how you're going to use it, um, you know, I I like to use the the example of of craft room. You know, people, are you an artist or are you a stamp collector? <laughs> yes, and I think are that's you, why yeah. forty is so pivotal. Is because you have enough life experience at forty, twenty years in your childhood home, and twenty years out, where you're able to say, okay what is my impact going to be in the world? And also, yeah. as you're talking about that, it's not just the organizing and for what are you going to make it into something new. It's also the shedding of the things that didn't and aren't going to make it into this next phase, good and bad. Yeah, I mean, uh, I found too, at around that age, 40-ish, <laughs> I feel like I go through the process about every seven years, not 40, but <laughs> the... um. It was so amazing to see the return to myself that I kind of yes. gave up to be what other people were expecting me to be yes. versus yes. being me. 
Um, and I found that's part of the process of with the organizing as well. And then you get to make the system work for you. It doesn't matter if it's on the left or right, technically, what works for you. It doesn't matter if it's in an orange folder or a purple folder, unless it's part of the system you've created that works for you. I mean, I know you have yours color coded, but. <laughs> and the only reason I have mine color coded is because as a teacher, if you want to be able to teach something, you need to have something you're teaching from. So yep. if there are too many variables, then people get really stuck in how many variables there are and what they yes. want their decisions to be and they take no action. So right. when I was a scrapbooker, you mentioned crafting, like I did scrapbooks, I sold scrapbooks for 17 years, so I loved it. And people would say, how many pictures fit on a page? I'm like, well, it depends. It could be four, it could be 12. Do you like collages? Do you like this? And they would then take no action. So I finally right. just started saying six. And then everybody who didn't mind did six, but you know what? Right. They immediately started making their books. As soon as I said, it's, you know, five yes. to 12 on a spread, they would sort their pictures in piles of, you know, 10 to 12 in little piles. They would say, I need this many pages and they would get started. So right. having those answers, can you make different colors for the slash brackets? Absolutely. But also inside of our community, everyone knows what pink, purple, blue, green means. Everybody right. knows what those rainbow slash buckets mean. That way the certified organizers can then do workshops and people who listen to the podcast can go to a certified organizer. It's all the same system. And all the different learnings or, or ways of talking yeah. about it from the different inputs will connect eventually yes. to all the people. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's true. Like I, on the one hand, color coding sounds like such a great idea in my brain. It doesn't work for me. I get so ADHD about making sure it's all exactly right. So oh, yeah, I don't do a lot of color coding, but I do understand it. <laughs> well, and the system, like our system, you know, every, you know, 12, 15 weeks, then you go back through the Sunday basket really does stay pretty organized, yeah. but we have the same system for work. Mm -hmm. And you have to go back through and make sure all the colors are correct at the end of the quarter, because a lot of new projects came and a lot of projects got finished. And so you have to refresh every quarter. Exactly. Um, but that's part of it too, everybody. You gotta <laughs> revisit things. You gotta yeah. actually use the systems you set up so that you can add to that productivity piece. It, that's what takes it into the, the third phase as Lisa's been talking about. All right, we've gotta take one more break. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. We're speaking with Lisa Woodruff of Organize 365 about her cool organizing research and her Sunday basket system, which is actually very good. Um, and not actually, like, I don't mean it like I didn't believe it. I mean it because it's really good and you should check <laughs> it out if you're struggling with papers because no one says my system's going to work for everybody. Um, and we will be back after the break. Get the Streamline Time Solution online course and learn easy ways to control your time and tasks. Links here somewhere. Down there, I think. And Lisa Woodruff of Organize 365 has been here speaking with me today. And we're totally geeking out on all the, um, you know, the details of how to teach and how to be organized and, and what other people might be missing about the whole process. But Lisa, tell me a little bit about how you view, like your bigger picture view about how organizing can actually help people in their day to day life. So I think that uh, when we defined housework, we defined housework as cleaning, tasks of daily uh, living, maintenance, and organization. And people view organization as optional, and it is. You don't have to be organized. Like, uh, your house won't be condemned if you're, you're not organized. They won't provide government assistance if you're not organized. But organization is the thing that gives you back more time. Mm -hmm. So once you get the Sunday basket organized, you save five hours. Once you get your home organized, you save seven more hours every week. So just in the um, 20 years that I personally have been doing the Sunday basket, I have saved 5,200 hours just through that one habit. And mm -hmm. habits always give you back time. Habits are what run your whole life. Like 85% of what you do every day is just based on the habits that you have developed over time. And habits are what we lost during COVID. Yes. So if you're wondering what your habits and your routines were, they all went away when we went into lockdown. And you know how exhausting it was to live through your life and try to establish new routines as mm -hmm. you were going through your life. So if you're looking for more uh, freedom, more mental capacity, more uh, ability to think and do what you're uniquely created to do, you need more habits 
and you need more organization to give you back that time to do that. I love that. Yep. We got to turn more over to our unconscious brains so our conscious minds can focus on the creative and fun stuff. Yeah. The deep work, as Cal yeah. Newport says. Um, fantastic. Okay. So let's tie this back to the streamlined connection, everybody. Organizing is a three step process. <laughs> you got to uh-huh. declutter. And then organize, which is actually using it and tweaking it and and seeing if it works. And then you increase your productivity because you get more effective using the system you created that works the way you think. And then you have more time to have more fun and take more vacations. Turns out you're wasting days a year when you lose your keys, everybody. Put them on the hook or in your pocket, in the special pocket in your purse or in the bowl or whatever you use but put your keys in the right place every day and you will save days. And if you do that for many areas of your house, you will save weeks, <laughs> if not months, and there's money involved too. You save money when you know what you have and where it goes and what you need and you plan your projects out accordingly instead of buying things too early in the process. All right, thank you so much, Lisa. It has been a delight having you on the show. Um, you have a free gift you're offering. What what can you tell us about that? Yes, if you go to organize365.com slash mini course, you can download our seven day free mini course that will get you started on making your own Sunday basket if you're not ready to get the organized 365 version. Perfect. And um, next week on the show, I will be speaking to uh, Dinara Kors, about feng shui she is actually a space doula which i love that concept um and i can't wait to talk to her i don't actually know her i've never met her and so it'll be an interesting conversation but feng shui it's kind of like what we were talking about lisa does the feng shui cure the clutter does the decluttering cure the feng shui um Don't forget, it's always more fun to organize together. So tell all of your friends about this and you can send comments, questions, feedback to Miriam at morethanorganized.net. And um, I'll see you next week. And in the meantime, have a delightful day.